Let's now move to one of the biggest stories from India. The government of India has decided to remove AFSPA from parts of three Indian states. It's a very big story, an extremely sensitive one. I'll start with the basics. AFSPA stands for Armed Forces Special Powers Act. Now, true to the name, the act gives special powers to the Indian Armed Forces, like a green flag for conducting operations anywhere, arresting anyone without a warrant, entering premises and searching without a warrant, and destroying structures. All of it is allowed. The Indian Armed Forces enjoy these powers thanks to AFSPA, but only in disturbed areas of India. Next question, who decides what is disturbed? The governor of a state. She declares an area disturbed and then the union government imposes AFSPA. The Armed Forces Special Powers Act was passed by the Indian Parliament in the year 1958. It was applied to all northeastern states, Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Manipur, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Nagaland and Tripura. All of them. Why? To maintain law and order. The government believed that these states were not equipped to deal with the kind of disturbance they were facing. Quick background. In 1949, when Manipur merged with India, many insurgent groups began demanding a separate state. In 1951, the Naga National Council or the NCC claimed to have conducted a plebiscite. It said 99% of Nagas voted for a free sovereign Naga state. In 1952, when India held its first general election, Nagaland boycotted the polls. It also boycotted government schools and government officials. So there was rebellion in the northeast. Plus, there was insurgency. Tripura shares an 856-kilometer-long border with Bangladesh. And it saw a rise in separatist activities in the 1990s. These separatist groups were reportedly being trained by elements in Bangladesh. In Assam, the United Liberation Front of Assam, or ULFA, kept the state disturbed with assassinations. There, were, there was extortion. There was drug trafficking. So it was in this backdrop that AFSPA was brought in. The law says it has to be reviewed every six months. It was, and it stayed. In 1985, AFSPA was also imposed on the state of Punjab in India. This was when India was battling the Khalistan movement. In 1990, it was applied to the erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir, again to battle insurgency and terrorism. Over the years, this act was withdrawn from most states except from Assam, Nagaland, Manipur, parts of Arunachal Pradesh and Jammu and Kashmir. It became controversial too. Critics called it draconian. They said it allows the army to commit atrocities. Now, there's no denying that the powers invested in the army through AFSPA are harsh. Counter-argument though, tough situations often require tough powers. In the Northeast, for example, the army was fighting groups that were well-armed and well-funded. They were countering secessionism in a very sensitive area. The Northeast shares its borders with four countries. Look at this map. China, Myanmar, Bangladesh and Bhutan. Plus there is extreme weather, harsh terrain and language barriers. But critics complain that AFSPA made the army immune, immune from prosecution. They cannot be dragged to court even in case of a botch-up even if there are civilian deaths. In December 2021, we saw one such botched operation. A group of daily wage laborers was killed in Nagaland. The army mis mistook them for terrorists. It was an anti-insurgency operation gone wrong, and it reignited the debate on AFSPA. There were protests. There were also some promises. Sitting in the chief minister's office in Manipur was Biren Singh, a member of the Bharatiya Janata Party. He pledged to do his best to have AFSPA repealed. Singh was voted to power again earlier this month. Cut to the present. India's Home Minister has made a big announcement on Twitter. He wrote, and I quote from what he said, in a significant step, the government of India, under the decisive leadership of Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi, has decided to reduce disturbed areas under Armed Forces Special Powers Act in the states of Nagaland, Assam, Manipur, and Manipur after decades. So what inspired this move? Improved security situation, says the government. Let me bring you another statement by the Union Home Minister. This is what he said. Reduction in areas under AFSPA is a result of the improved security situation and fast-track development due to the consistent efforts and several agreements to end insurgency and bring lasting peace in the Northeast by Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government. So is this course correction or an act being faded out because it outlived its purpose? Data from the Home Ministry's website points at the success of AFSPA. There has been a drop in insurgency. Related incidents in the Northeast have gone down. 
In 1999, the number of insurgency-related incidents was more than 1,700. 1999. In 2021, just 209. Last year also saw a 75% reduction in insurgency compared to 2014. Between 2019 and 2022, more than 6,900 armed extremists surrendered in the Northeast. 4,800 weapons were dropped. The situation in the hill states is improving. The question now is, what does the government mean by reduction in area under AFSPA? What is this reduction? It says AFSPA will be completely removed from 23 districts of Assam and partially from one. How many districts are there in Assam? 33. In Manipur, AFSPA will be removed from 15 police station areas across six districts. There are a total of 16 districts in the state. In Nagaland, it will go in a phased manner. For now, seven of 15 districts will cease to be disturbed areas. The chief ministers of all the concerned states have lauded this move. Many civilians say it was long coming. And to some, the announcement spelt peace in India's Northeast. It's a story that we're happy to report. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.